This weekend on the Austin Healy Channel, we're in Vreeland, Netherlands at the best place in the world, the Healy Museum. Okay. It's got a special engine. What, got what's a, in it? Uh, everything you can imagine. <laughs> okay, except for seat belts. No seat belts. <laughs> That's not period. I, I was required to put seat belts in by my wife. <laughs> No, I haven't. I, uh, the only Healy I've driven is the BT7 that I just finished. Okay. But uh, as soon as I get the BN1 done, I'll, I'll, I'll be driving it. Well, don't, don't be disappointed if you do the BN1 because this is a completely different uh, car. <laughs> Is amazing. Okay, so what what do you have under the hood? It's the normal standard engine, but with <laughs> steel crank, steel rods. Okay. Uh, special pistons, 160 brake horsepower. Okay. But but still the four cylinder. Still the original engine. Nice. I grew up driving Sprite, uh, 68 Sprite. Okay. So uh, it didn't do that. <laughs> like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> I'm very impressed with the power you get out of that. Yeah. Wow. All modernized. That's yeah. This is cool. the one three quarter as is with the uh, old airbox. I think a modern uh, modern generator, generator. or al alternator. Uh, 
Yeah. High torque starter. Yeah. But the rest, I think, is well. This is a bigger okay. aluminum. Yeah. So we're here at the Healy Museum in Veerland, Netherlands, which is in the region of Holland. Did I get that right? It's in the Netherlands, Holland, in the, in the middle of the Netherlands. I, I've had a quick tour of your town and it's beautiful. You have canals and lakes and boats and, and bridges, that, bridges. Bridges that open yes. every five minutes. <laughs> that's wonderful, in, in, unless you're on the other side. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. I have to re introduce you. You're Hans van der Kierkhoff. Yes. Did I get that right? That's right. I've been yeah. working on it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, and you're the founder of the Healy Museum, right? Yes, I'm the founder and I'm the chairman of the foundation. Um, and I'm the curator. So, uh, But I, I serve the drinks. <laughs> I clean the dustbin. I do everything together with my wife. You do it all. Uh, with your wife. That's yes. excellent. How did the museum come about? How did it come about here in the Netherlands? What is it about the Netherlands that, that excites people about these British cars? Uh, uh, Holland is, uh, is a classic car country. We have a lot of classic cars. We have a lot of huge collections, uh, often hidden away, so not open to the public. I've been uh, involved for a very long time in Ely's. My first Ely I owned in 68. And I've, well, not really collected, I just saved things. And if you save things long enough, you suddenly have a collection. It grew and it grew and it became more and it became more. And uh, I ended up with uh, about 14 Heelys, which was far too much. I have to start in the beginning. Good place uh, to start. <laughs> 68. Uh, my first Healy. Uh, a doorman came to me and he said, I hear you sometimes talk about Healy, I have one, do you want to buy it? And that was a 3000 Mark II A. Okay. And, uh, but I was only 18, so uh, I said, well, how much do you want for the car? He said, 2,250 gills, if you convert it now around 1,000 euros. And it doesn't seem a lot now. But then? But I only earned 65 guilders a week. So it still was a lot of money. But I managed to, to buy it. I sold my moped and my bicycle and my stamp collection and my uh, everything to get money. So finally I had to, So I was 18 years old and I had my first 3,000. I got involved in the Healy Club. I became a member for my birthday. I got the membership of the Healy Club. Uh -huh. And I stayed a member. But then you're doing the drives around the church, as we call them. Uh, but if you've done that for 10 years, you fed up with it. You have done them all because the Netherlands is as big as a post stand. So if, if you've <laughs> done them for 10 years. So we went abroad, we went to England, and there I met Rine Sinke. Rine Sinke is a well-known Healy driver. He uh, is also a very driver. He won the Tulip Rally three times overall, which is a big, yeah, event, a big, big thing. Uh, and we were sitting at the bar and he said, uh, well, are you also fed up with all the... He said, yeah, oh, terrible. He said, that's why we're here in England, to, to expand our view. He said, he said, well, why don't we start racing or rallying with Healy? And of course, the idea was born at the bar. And the more mm. beer we had, the easier <laughs> it became. Uh, and we built three race cars with three friends and we started racing. Mm. Uh, we started with the MG competition, then the next year we had our international license and we started racing all over Europe. Uh, ended up uh, in uh, three times doing uh, the Classic Le Mans. Uh, in 2012 I did it in 54 FAC, that's an ex-Works Sebring car. And then I thought I became older, we sold our business, so I, I said, well, now I've ended up at Le Mans in an ex-Works car, what will be next? So, What's higher than that? <laughs> and yeah, and, and uh, I had done it for 20 years, um, so finito. I was in England again and somebody said to me, I said, Hans, how old are you now? Because I heard you sold your business. He said, well, he said, what are you going to do with your collection? He said, well, I didn't realize I had a collection. I said, I have a lot of stuff. But <laughs> In the early days, it was really yeah, saving things and collecting things. When mm -hmm. eBay came up, uh, it became, on one hand, became much easier because everything was available as long as you, as you had a filled wallet, you could buy everything you wanted. Right. 
But on the other hand, the market became much bigger. I came in contact with uh, Bill Wood in the States, and he had uh, a, a large part of the uh, factory archive from Jeff Healy. And we started negotiating, and it took me almost a year to get it from him. So it became bigger, and then we have to do something with it. We sold our business. I, was, uh, I had the idea we're going to start a museum. The first idea was mentioned in 2010. We had the, f uh, the yearly uh, meeting in Germany, that was. And I thought, okay, we're going to do it. Uh, my neighbor was Cor van Zadelhof. That's uh, one of the biggest real estate people in the Netherlands, actually worldwide. Um, and he said, well, Hans, I heard you sold your business. And I said, be careful, because people who stop working, uh, they fall over, get a heart attack. Uh, said, yeah, I know, you know, but I'm not going to do it easy. I'm going to start a healing museum. And he said, oh, do you already have a building? Because real estate was his business. Uh, so that's why we ended up here in Freeland. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I imagine this, the uh, finding a, a location w would be a It was huge very difficult, stumbling. very difficult, yeah. because uh, originally I was looking for an old factory, mm -hmm. but the problem, I think that's worldwide, not only in the Netherlands, is pollution. Uh. Asbest roofs, uh, oil, pollution, yeah, yeah. Uh, ground, so that was, mm, couldn't succeed. And another thing was uh, parking space. Yeah, right. Because if you go to, a, a, yeah, we have a lot of parking space, eight, eight cars, you, yeah, but that's not enough if you want to do car meetings. Yeah. Well, you've seen it yesterday, it, 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 yeah, you need a lot of space to, to yeah. Yeah, yeah, yesterday we, um, there was 20, 20 Heelys in your parking lot. I, I haven't counted so I didn't them. count either, no, no. but it's, it's the most Heelys I've seen in one spot ever. It was, okay, it yeah. was really a wonderful experience. <laughs> now, to give you an idea, yesterday was a small event. A small event. Yeah. I'm coming back for you. Yeah. <laughs> we lost. Uh, we, had, we had once had a, a, a sprite meeting over here, and then we had 80 sprites over. Here. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday you explained a design decision to me that really changed the way I look at the the BT7 I just finished. Um, it's a two plus two. Yes. And you told me a story about the plus two that that changed. Um, how I how I look at it. Could you share that with us again? Yeah, well, well, the the the, the, the BN and the BT, uh, the two plus two and the two, it was actually uh, uh, a thing that came up uh, from America. Uh, in America, they said the two seater is a, a car for the rich people, and the four seater is a more or less a family car. So, for a four seater, you paid less import tax, and but they forgot to mention the size of the seats in the law. So that's why uh, yeah, if you can get rid of tax, uh, everybody get it very clever. So they, and that's why we see in, in the Porsches, the Aston Martins, the Ferraris, all the expensive cars, the two plus two. Everybody always said, what a ridiculous seats, you can't sit in them. But it was never meant to be. It was just a, a way to get to pay less import tax. Yeah, exactly. It, it didn't make sense to me until you explained it. Yeah. And I, I think that that says a lot about the your museum and what you're you're carrying forward the stories that that get lost, and we end up just going, well, why did they do that? And another thing uh, he did, uh, he made an agreement with uh, the tax people that. Uh, the GIs that were located in Germany could take, uh, could buy a car tax-free, and could take a tax-free back home. Oh, I didn't realize that. And I knew there were a lot of uh, servicemen that had bought. Yeah, years. but they could buy it tax-free because they had an American passport, and they could take it tax-free home. So that's why a lot of early cars ended up in the States because yeah. everybody bought one because it was cheap for them, and then they took it home. Very cool. Design-wise, um, I think everybody agrees that the lines of the big Healy are just a beautiful thing. Yeah. Is there anything design-wise or engineering-wise on the Healy's that, you j that just makes you go, why did they do that? They should have solved the problem of the ground, ground clearance. <laughs> and, and they tried to do that with the B and 3 because we have an, what we call, an, in, in Holland, we call it an underslow, so the chassis goes under the back axle, right. and then the axle hits the chassis. Uh, with the B and 3 they made a chassis which go over the back axle, mm -hmm. so then you can put the car as high as you want. 
but they never did that and I think yeah that was a, a big failure hmm. they should have solved that problem and another thing is the heat in the car because you sit with your feet on the <laughs> exhaust with your leg against the gearbox tunnel with your bottom on the exhaust and uh, um, a story, I don't know if it's true, but uh, um, when Jeff did the first rides with the prototypes, uh, he took Margot with him. And of course, that was a right-hand drive car. Mm. And Jeff said, oh, I think we have to do something with the heat. And Margot was always cold when she came from Italy and England was cold for her. She said, oh, no, no, that's not a problem. It's, it's okay, it's okay. And later, of course, we found out that it was <laughs> actually a bit hot. That's a good story. Yeah. But... <laughs> I, I, that's what they told me, but I'm not sure if it's correct. Really, a lot of people have stuff lying around which they don't know what to do with. Mm -hmm. The children will throw it away if they pass away. So, if you have the chance and you not want to hang on it to fall over, donate it to the Healing Museum. Uh, that's that's, a, a, that's good, a, good, a good place. That's a good thing for, for all my viewers. Yeah. If, if you have stuff laying around, uh, sales photos or... Uh, toy cars or no, no chassis, no cars, no chassis, no, 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 <laughs> no car, rusted no, chassis, no, 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 <laughs> no boxes, spare no, parts. No, we're no. not a junkyard. <laughs> not not classic car magazines because uh, uh, everybody has piles of classic car magazines. Uh, my dad's, I still and, have a and, pile and of. The whole attic is full of magazines. <laughs> Is there anything else my, my viewers can do to help support your, your museum? Here? Well, we have, uh, uh, we already support it. We have the worldwide club support. There's a sign in the museum which you, maybe you can later take a picture of uh, a shot mm -hmm. of. Uh, so we're already supported by uh, America, the Swedish club. Uh, they do a donation to the museum to help us survive. Next to that, we have uh, what we call the friends of the museum. And that's what you experienced yesterday. Then Very good friends too. <laughs> once a year we have a day uh, for volunteers and friends. That are people, they pay uh, 100 euros a year and then you can come. Uh, but if you live in this area, you're not going to come every week to pay 12 euros to visit the museum. So that's why we have the friends, 100 euros, you can come in as often as you want with two people. And yeah, that's what we call the friends. So that's a, a big support for for the existence of the of the healing museum, and next to that we have, of course, the yeah the meetings, the club meetings, uh, the yearly meetings. Uh, we rent out uh, the museum for business uh, meetings. Uh, we all have now. Uh, they have just arrived. The motor cycling uh, club. They come and have a lunch. Uh, next week we have the TVR club. Uh, MG Club, Jaguar, BMW, uh, uh, on, on our website which you can look who we'll visit the museum and that's a lot of important content. The big advantage is that Healy is what we call a, a, a dead brand, it's, it's no longer produced, so no car company has a problem by coming here to have a meeting. That's a good point, yeah. Because if you go to Laumann for example, that's a brand, they are, the, the, the history is a brand. Yeah. So. Uh, BMW machines they don't go no, so and no. that's our big advantage to uh, hmm. and then of course we have to start for a rally a finish of a rally um, yeah. that's why we make our living good well I, I hope my my uh, my followers can can help you out yeah um, now I'm gonna ask you the most difficult question this is the the Sophie's choice question what is your favorite car in the museum it completely depends on, on uh, the event or, or where I'm going. As I told earlier, if we go on a holiday, I take the BJ8 because that's part of the family. It's, it's, it's a, a car which I love to drive. It's got a, a fully prepared Dennis Wells engine in it. Um, it's, it I've done a lot on the heat, uh, so that problem is solved. Um, but for example, yesterday the BN2, uh, yeah, that's a, a marvelous car to drive. Uh, the BN7, which is the, the, the a rare bird, that's one of the 350 build, with a, with a two-seater hardtop on it, a tri-car, a rebuilt engine, um, a lovely car to drive. The black one is a Rudspeed, uh, tri-car, tuned, side exhaust, 
uh, if you go in the mountains with the rut speed, it's, it's yeah, exciting. The pearl in our museum is of course uh, Donald Healy's private car. That's the one that surprised me the most yesterday. That's, that's the, 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 the S coupe. Uh, there were only two coupes built and this is one of them. And Donald drove that car for more than nine years. And uh, he drove it from, from uh, Perrinport where he lived to Warwick every day. Um, and it, that's, that's a yeah, very special car. We're going to play a little game. We're going to, it's a lightning round. I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to say A or B, and you choose which one yeah, is the, the best for you. I'm not, I'm not a football player, but I, I know, yeah, or you know a Formula One even. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so some of these might be controversial, but you know, pick your personal favorite. BN1 or BJ8? BJ8. Hardtop or cabriolet? Uh, uh, it's hard, isn't it? No, 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 no. Uh, first thing comes a, to your a, mind. A. A, hardtop. SU or Weber? Weber. Stock or custom? Stock. Concourse or driver? Driver. <laughs> sure. Good answer. Country road or racetrack? That's a difficult one. Yeah. Uh, racetrack. Racetrack, very good. Boot or trunk? Boot. Boot. Whitworth or UNF? UNF. <laughs> Sprite or midget? Sprite. Easy one. <laughs> Barn find or showroom floor? Barn. Painted wire wheels or chrome? Painted. Radio or engine noise? Engine. <laughs> <laughs> Straight away or chicane? Uh, um, straight away. Straight away. That's all. Thank yeah. you. That, yeah. that was fun. Yeah. And, <laughs> Hard and, questions, and, though, aren't no, they? No, not, not, yeah, it's sometimes <laughs> difficult because, because I've been racing for 20 years, and uh, when you put Webbers on, on a Healy, uh, it, it becomes a completely different car. And to give, to give you an idea, 54 FAC we raced, and, and, and also the yellow one, which I later show you a, a picture of Le Mans. And then we're talking about a full prepared race engine with 300 brake horsepower and a top speed of 260 kilometers. Wow. So that, that, that's, and I'll show you later in, 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 in a movie. Uh, so, but on the other end, Le Mans is a, is a, a long straight, so the yeah. top speed is incredible. Right. Uh, chicanes is more if you go to Zandvoort for example yeah, then it's, 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 it's small and, and curvy and, but it's, it's yeah, so it's difficult it's <laughs> difficult and, and you asked me B and 1 of BJ8 uh, the, the, the B and 1 and 2 are far more fun to drive than a BJ8 the 6 cylinder engines are uh, I won't say too heavy in the front but mm. uh, it's a completely different car but a BJ8, uh, the red one, which is in the museum now, uh, I've done over 300,000 kilometers in that car. 300,000? Yes. Wow. And this is my third engine. I've done, I rally did in the beginning, and now I'm taking it easier. And that car has become a part of the family. Mm. So that's why I say BJ8. But to be honest, driving, the, well, you, yesterday you enjoyed oh, the BN2. Very much. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. It's, it's more a car you can throw around. Yeah. And the BJ8 is more comfortable. It's, it's a, you have to hood, so if you take it on holiday and it starts raining, you can close it easily. You have more luggage space. Uh, yeah. yeah. That was uh, yeah, the difficult choices you had to make and the hard top and open. Uh, I have both. I have an open and I have a closed one with a hard top. Um, and strangely enough, people always think that with a hardtop, it's more heat in the car, which isn't the case, because you don't have the sun on your head. Ah. And uh, if you have to take the side screens out, it's, it's actually more comfortable with a hardtop than an open car. Interesting. And of course, the car becomes stiffer. Yes, it would. So it's, it's, it's also that question was a, a mixed feeling. But yeah. open, of course, you enjoy far more of the area you're driving to. Right. Okay, I, w I do want to talk about this car that's sitting behind us. Not the bug eye, this one. Yes. Um, as you know, I'm working on a BN1. That's uh, the heritage certificate says it was originally Coronet Cream. Yes. 
And uh, originally, uh, when I before I bought the car, there were pictures of of what it could look like, and they actually had used a picture of this very car sitting in this gravel bed. Um, so uh, once I bought it, I was doing more research and went, "There's a Healy Museum. It's not too far away. Uh, I gotta come here." Um, what can you tell us about this car? This is uh, actually a very unique car. Uh, before it came here, it only had three owners, or two owners, with a third owner. Uh, the first owner had it for 30 years. The second owner had it for 30 years. And uh, now it's up here. It's an unrestored car. It still yeah. has the original carpet in it. Uh, the cylinder head was cracked, so we had to change that to an aluminium one. But that's actually the only thing that, that we changed. So uh, it's a true survivor car. It's a real survivor. Wow. And it's a very early one. Um, I think that everybody knows the story that in the beginning they were all aluminium or aluminum, they mm -hmm. say in America. And, and they changed the wings and the doors in steel. Mm -hmm. uh, but when the first few hundred cars, they also had, and you can see that with this car, if you maybe you can let, take it closer. Though it's very wrinkly, it's bubbled. Mm -hmm. And that counts because it has a steel inner frame and an aluminium skin plate. Okay. And if, if you put that in the sun, the extension of the two material is completely different. Okay. And then it goes bloop, 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 mm -hmm. and after three or four times it stays. Mm -hmm. And that's why they changed the hood and the boot lid in steel completely. Ah. My, my boot lid's aluminum with a steel understory. That's also an early car, then, because yeah. the, the coronet creams were made in 53 mm -hmm. for the uh, coronation of Queen Elizabeth. So they were available in coronet cream with a, a blue interior or a red interior. Those two combinations. Mm -hmm. Uh, this was, uh, uh, yeah, I, I got a message from America, from uh, Great Jane, and she said, uh, we had the car for 30 years and we're going to move to an, uh, an easier uh, apartment, and we only have parking space for three cars, and we have four, so I have to get rid of one, mm. and are you interested uh, in, in the, the BN1? So that's why it came into the museum in 2012. So a very early car with original uh, Dunlop wheels. I don't know if you know the difference between the, we call it replicas and the original ones. The ori in an original one, the, the, the inner circle is far more flat than on the new ones. <laughs> if, if you have the original one, put new spokes in, try to keep that. Yeah. You also have probably the original tag on the inside, on, in, in the boot lid. The plastic um, plate with all the numbers? No, I, no? I think I'm missing I'll, that. I'll, you can see that, I'll well, show yeah. you later. It, it's, uh, it's, it's unrestored, as I said, it's, it's, so it's a no, very that, original. That's, that's even better, yeah. really. Um, b because my, my car is in such a state to, to just, I, I need to have a, a reference. Yeah. And this is... Yeah, you won't get a, the, find I a better one than better this. reference than no. this. <laughs> You can see on top of the door because the, it has been resprayed once in '61, okay. and you can see on top of the doors it's completely worn through by leaning right. out the arm, and there you can see the original color. Oh, that's original. It was an extra from Hamburg. Wow. It's got the original. Uh, Full glass uh, side screens. You ever seen those? No. Uh, have you ever seen the, the plastic one? Oh, wow. That's beautiful. <laughs> Only the very early cars have that. The problem, the problem was if you had these on and you, clo and you had the hood on and you closed the door. How do you get in? Because <laughs> it doesn't have the door handles. Yes, yes. <laughs> so you have to undo your hood to get into the car. And that's why the lady had to... That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> my very, 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 very expensive. I imagine, wow. And, and these switches are... All easy. added by the first owner. Okay. I have a whole file of this... Uh, Carl, I'll show it to you. Uh, this is the import paperwork. Uh, these are all the, the... Yeah. Okay, with the car. 
this is the American American title. Right? This is the original invoice. Oh wow, the Jaguar Cleveland. Yeah. $182.40. But he made it a deposit. Well. <laughs> uh, original warranty paper. That's me. Uh, Probably can't bring it in for warranty. No. Uh, no. Uh, this is the, he financed the car. So the finance papers. He wrote a letter to the Donald Healy company and said, I only have three gears. But they told me originally it had four gears. <laughs> uh, he got a letter back with a drawing from the Healy Motor Company and they said if you machine this knockoff, you have four gears in it. So that car has four gears. So they did it? They did it. But it's completely useless. All, all the papers are with the car, even the, the hand manual for the grease car. Oh, they use the grease car. Uh, the envelope, and we got the invoice in, the business cards from the guy he bought it from. Became a member of Healy Drivers Club. To show you was here. You have the different side screens. And that's the one that's the one came with the car. And this is the original advert from Harco for the exhaust. Wow! Wow! And there, here you won't get it more complete. No, no, that's that's wonderful. I wish all all the Healys came with a, yeah. a binder full of stuff like that. <laughs> Well, you have you have a beautiful museum. Um, I, I've just been you know smiling ear to ear since I've gotten here, um, blown away by all the fabulous cars and the the details and the engines around and the it, plus the the atmosphere. The 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 friends you had here yesterday were were incredibly friendly and warm and welcoming and. Uh, you took me for a drive and uh, uh, another one of your friends yeah, took my wife for a drive because she was just waiting for, your, for yeah. us to come back. Yeah. <laughs> and and that, that, it speaks a lot about, about uh, the, the Netherlands and the, I feel very welcome here. Well, that, well that's why we also call, it's mentioned on our website, a healing museum, a museum with a passion. And that's actually, that says everything. If you want to come along on the ride as we complete this project, click the subscribe button. If you want YouTube to tell you every time there's a new video, click the alarm bell. Thanks for watching, and your support is very much appreciated.